when I started, it was a bit shameful. Like because I've worked in big organizations, big firm. I've worked in I've worked in Sheraton Hotel. I've worked for Fine Coat, the owner of Fine Coat Paint. I was his private chef for two years. I've worked for um, Adram Oil and Gas as a private chef too. Then I worked in UBA as a private chef too. So gaining all those experiences, you understand? Coming back to the streets again. When I first started, seriously, it was it was a big blow for me because when I see people I know, like I'll be hiding my face, like, ah, man, I don't want these guys to see me, like. But later, so people start appreciating what I do. You understand? Because most times when I, like when I make my snacks like this, you see crowd of people lining up to buy. You understand? So it, it, that alone gives me the encouragement to continue. <laughs> I share more what? I'm not ashamed at all. The most special thing is that when you see that the person is hard working, he knows what he's doing. You understand? You just have to have patience and encourage the person. Instead of selling our bodies or stealing, so we should just engage ourselves in something doing. Nothing you will put, people will not buy. Nothing, if it's pure water, even it's pepper, you will make money. Depend how zealous you are. The last time you saw me holding the microphone here was probably in your stage where we went to speak with Elizabeth Papa, the lady who was reportedly pregnant for about 10 years before she was delivered of her baby. Today, we have heard of Sam, a 30-year-old young man here and his wife here. Both of them fry pop -off, donuts, egg roll, fish roll in the Anapaja area of Lagos. They say it's a very good business and um, it's very lucrative. They are not shy to associate themselves with this kind of business, which many people consider to be very dirty. We're going to speak with them to find out what exactly has made them do this kind of business and how they are faring. Big shout out to Emmanuel Sully, the man behind the camera, for bringing you this. And then it means that Larry Pala. After graduating from Dove, then I I stopped baking. I stopped baking initially. I went into cooking. So I cook for parties. I cook for residents too. So like after six years, I came back to baking. Then I stopped baking again. I went back to cooking because I enjoy cooking than baking. You understand? Baking baking requires more stress. Then baking does not give you time to relax. But cooking. Cooking is always fun because you know when you are cooking like when you see people eat your food and enjoy it, it gives you joy. That's one thing about that's one thing I like about cooking. So but when I met my wife, then I just felt like salary won't do it. You understand? Salary won't do it. So I had to come back to baking. So I have to start with baking to own a restaurant. You understand? But on the long run when you like when you despise the days of your little beginning, no matter where you get to, to the top, you will still come back to that days of little beginning because there is no way you can do without that days of little beginning. So this is like my days of little beginning for my business. You understand? So, uh, but when I started, you understand, when I started, it was a bit shameful. Like because I've worked in big organizations, big firm. I've worked in, I've worked in Sheraton Hotel. I've worked for Fine Coat, the owner of Fine Coat Paint. I was his private chef for two years. There is Remy Awode. I worked in his house as his private chef. I've worked for um, um, Adram Oil and Gas as a private chef too. I worked in their company as a private chef. Then I worked in UBA as a private chef too. So gaining all those experiences, you understand? So then coming back to the streets again, when I first started, seriously, it was it was a big blow for me because when I see people I know, like I'll be hiding my face, like ah, man, I don't want these guys to see me, like. But later, when I when I started, okay, the first month was very rough. Was very rough because then I just then I just came to the street like this, so hustling for customers, then trying to gain your own customer was very difficult. You understand? So, but as time goes by, I started getting used to the street once again. I started getting ground in the street. 
So people start appreciating what I do. You understand? Because most times when I like when I make my snacks like this, you see crowd of people lining up to buy. You understand? So it, it that alone gives me the encouragement to continue. You understand? So after a long run, after like achieving some numbers of customers you get, I now discover that what I'll be making while working in a month, I'll be making it in the street for like two days. My salary now. Yeah, like salary. The major challenge we have in this business is um, Lagos State Tax Force. You understand? They have their tax force, they have their kai. You understand? Like we might just be here now, they will just come. So everybody will need to start running their task. You pay rent for this place? Yes, I paid. How much do you pay rent for this I place? I paid like 60k a year. Every year? No, 60k for like six months. So like a year is 120k? Yeah, 120 for this space. Place. Yes, just this space. How long, for how long have you been running this particular one here? Yeah, yeah, like two months. Two months? Yes. You've been here just two Yes, months. just two months. I was formerly at um, Lekki. That's um, Igbara to be precise. I started from Igbara school. That is a public school at Igbara. Then from there, I opened another branch at Ibarra bus stop. That is the main bus stop. Then from there, I got another one at Agungi bus stop. You understand? So I was running those three branches. So and I, I had boys I was training then. You understand? So we are the boys. Yeah, most of them have their own places now. And I'm glad yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So most of them, they run their own businesses now. And most of them still work for me. You understand? So from there, then I, I got a place at Lagos Island. That is Tinubu Square, Lagos Island. You get. So even even um, as we're doing this interview now, I know some of my people they will be like, I'll not be pop off with this. We know this guy now, pop off. You call you pop off. Yeah, that is my nickname. You understand? I used to be ashamed of the name before, but now I'm bold like. You get it a prize. As in. Nice. When did you meet your wife? Yeah, I met my wife at 1004 Estate. <laughs> I was working. For, I was working as a chef when I met her. She was working as, um, she was working in, in a. How will I put it? Um, she was working in a bank per se. Yeah, she was working in a bank. So like a financial firm. So. So one day, like I finished cooking, then I just came out to the lobby. Came out to the lobby like to just. Find it. So I just ah. Uh, who is this person? You understand? So then, two guys were like, they were like, try to dupe her, you get. Because they were like, they can get her a visa to travel, they can do this, they can do that. She needs to pay so so amount of money. So I was just listening from the background, like, so immediately those guys left. So I woke up to them, and, these guys, they want to dupe you. These guys are not real. I have not met them before, but at least with my own little experience I have, Man, these guys are not real. Don't, don't trust them. So that was how we became friends. Like up to two months, I asked her out, then she agreed. Then from there, we started, we started dating. At what point did you determine that you're going to leave um, the catering job? I mean, was there an incident that changed your mind finally? Was there a particular? Yes, incident? yes. That was two years ago. I was working for one man. I was working for my boss. I don't want to mention them. Yeah. But he's, he's, um, he's among board of trustees for UBA Bank. He's a top man in UBA Bank. You understand? So, that December, okay, I worked for him from January till December. So, towards that December, then, he wants to travel. He wants to travel to his village. That's um, Olu, um, Imo State. So, he begged me that I should come with him so I can assist his family towards that, the period of Christmas so I can cook for him. And, and the, the man told me that anybody that enters this compound must eat before leaving. That even if, even the flies in the compound should eat to their satisfaction. So I was like, I saw cause of, you know, this, this guy is a big boy, you understand? So all the, all the villagers, they look up to him. So all the villagers, they just troop into the house. All the villagers were trooping into the house. And this man didn't tell me. Because as soon he told me, it won't be a big deal. I'll just call some of my boys in the industry, like some of my colleagues, like that we cook together. Okay, guy, there's a job for us in Nemo State. 
I've traveled, in, I've traveled to so many states for this particular job, this same kind of job, you understand? But he didn't tell me. So I just went there unprepared. I went there just for a family, you understand? So on getting there, I started cooking, bro. Like in a day, I cook like two bags of rice every day. That is minus. That is, okay, I will start breakfast by 12 midnight. I will start breakfast by 12 midnight. Once breakfast is ready, around 8, I will start preparing for lunch around 8. Once lunch is ready, like by 2, I will start preparing for dinner again. You understand? So it was just only me. So, the man broke the agreement we had. You understand? So instead of living on the 29th of December, the man, okay, on the 28th of December, I went to him, I was like, sir, I'm leaving tomorrow. If you see the way this man yelled at me, like, I'm leaving to where? Who do I expect to come and do my job for me? Like, where do I think I'm going to? Who, who, who do I think will come and do this job for me? That I have to stay. I have to stay with them in the village until they are ready to come back to Lagos. Ah! And I was like, God. Because since when I entered that compound, I've not, I've not even crossed the gate like I'm going outside because I'm always busy. I'm always busy. After cooking, I'm the one that will still serve everybody, like the guests that come to the house. I'm the one that will still serve. I'm the one that will still wash the plates. I'm the one that will still wash the pot. So you get the stress was too much. But I was still trying to like, I was still trying to be here until that day. Until that day, the man really showed himself. You know what this man did? This man gave me 20,000. I will never forget that day. He gave me 20k for a job that if I am to build that man for what I did for him before God that man, that man will be paying me more than one million naira. If I'm to build that man for I stayed with him for over a month and I was cooking every day. You understand? Every day. But the man took advantage of me and was like, give me 20k. When he gave me that 20k, I was like, that do I think that, that I'm doing him a favor. That I'm not doing him a favor, he's paying for my service. That I look so cheap, I was like, 20K for my service. 20K. I, I'm working with him in Lagos, he's paying me 80,000 per month. You understand? So I was like, 20K. So this 20K now is dash. So, like, my salary now, so it's, it's like trying to tell you that the work you yeah. did was part of the argument. Yeah. yeah. So that twenty k, I was like a giveaway. Like, let me just dash this guy twenty k. She, I'm still going to pay him salary for this month. So ah, man, I was like, God, is this it? So I just, I just left um, Olu. While I was coming back to Lagos, I made up my mind never ever to work under somebody again. So I just decided that, man, let me do something. Even if it means walking pure water in the street. Because then I used to hear people saying, ah, man, I sell granites and see the houses are built. I sell granites. Then I used to doubt them. I used to be like, some people say, I'm selling pure water, man, see the houses are built. And I'd be like, pure water, guy in a lie. Oh, I, man, I won't believe this. You understand? I don't used to believe it from the first time, from those. Those first instances, I used to hear about it, so... Then when I go to the street, man, I knew, man, achieving anything is possible from the street. You understand? It just depends on your determination. You understand? It depends on your determination, on how, and your zeal. You get? So when I started, when I started, it wasn't big. I started with one paint, one paint of flour, then one ragolis of granite oil, then, um... 10 eggs for egg roll. That was how I started. How about today? So now, today, like I buy, I buy 10 bags a week. I buy 10 bags a week. I have a store at the back. I buy my flowers, 10 bags a week. I buy granite oil, like four gallons a week. I buy my granite oil, like four gallons a week. Then my eggs, I buy 50 crates a week. So, you understand? Business is sure growing. Yes, business is growing. You start building your house now. Yes, yes, by God's grace. I have, I, okay, I bought a plot at Ikorodu. That is, um, can I remember the name of that place? I'm always forgetting the name of that place. 
So it's a plot. I bought it for 800. You understand? So by God's grace, I've lifted it to Lintel. You understand? How did you meet your husband? Uh, I met him at my former workplace at VI. What, what endeared you to him? Why do you like him? To me, I saw him like someone that is hard working, someone that is not lazy. So that's what attracts me. He's hard working. Yes. Okay, so since you started this business that looks like a dirty job, this business that looks like a dirty job, you still stayed with him. Why did you stay with him? You know, although it's not easy, there are many challenges. But when you have patience, when you have patience, ah. You will enjoy at last. Are you enjoying now? Yes, sure. Even when he was working, and now, there is difference. Mm, there what is the difference? Di Tell me the difference. <laughs> the difference there is that you can't compare salary work with your own hard working. Like what he earns in a month, he can earn in a week or two weeks. You understand? It depends on the market. How the market. But you can't compare what it ends in a month, uh, compare it in a, a month. So that's why I enjoy. Although oh, yeah. there are very challenges. You are not ashamed to stay here with him? <laughs> ashamed of what? I'm not ashamed at all. Ah, when we are selling, we, make it, we thank God for everything. So why should I be ashamed, ashamed of what? Your friends don't I'm see not you. stealing now. Your friends don't see you. And you're ah, ah, if they see me, call. but you know, I'm selling my market. I'm doing my business. I'm not stealing. I'm not, so why should I be ashamed? Do you have any advice for ladies out there who are always looking for quick, quick money? Uh, the advice I have that, you know, this life is not easy. Before you get to somewhere, you must struggle, you must pass many challenges. But when you have, when you know yourself and you focus and you have patience, you will get whatever you want to get. So my advice is that, you know, instead of selling our bodies or stealing, so we should just engage ourselves in something doing. Nothing you will put, people will not buy. Nothing, if it's pure water, if it's pepper, you will make money. Depend how zealous you are. And one thing that I just enjoy is that he's that type of person. When you talk to him, he listens. There's one man who works here. Yeah. There's one? Yeah. He's an apprentice too. You understand? The man is 60. The man is 60 years. You understand? Why is he an apprentice with you? How, how did you come about it? When he came to me, you understand, it was like, he needs to start something. He needs to start something. Now, what can he do? So I encouraged him. I said, if he can learn that age is just a matter of numbers, you understand? If he can learn, he can still achieve from it. You understand? So since then, he has been coming. He has been coming and he has, been, he has been catching up on one or two things, you get. So if somebody at 60 can decide to do something, can someone at 60 can decide to achieve something, not minding his age, not minding his strength, you understand? Because this, is, this requires strength, you understand? So not minding his strength, and he still decides to do something, man. So what, what will I do at my age? So why can't I do something at my age? You get. So the man to me is, is, is another big inspiration. You understand? Because most people, once they are 40, 50, they think that's the end of the world for them and they can't achieve anything. Because we all make mistakes. 